Hey guys, James here. Welcome back to Print and Play, and today we're going to be going through the second and final part of the arcade build. But I want to start off by apologizing for both the delay and the quality of this video. I've been editing this video for a while, and a forced Windows update caused my computer to restart while my video editing software was open. My fault, I know, not for not disabling the automatic updates. Anyways, when I reopened the video project, not only was the video project itself corrupted, so were all the raw videos that were attached to it. So I've edited together the video that I had left, which was the video I was using for my main audio source. Unfortunately, I lost most of the good angles for the assembly, so I've inserted some drawn diagrams to try and clarify where needed, and I'll be answering questions in the comments as much as I can to try and make this as easy as possible. Alright, thanks for listening. Let's, uh, let's get this train wreck started. So if you're replicating the same electronics that I'm doing, we can go ahead and mount up our power jack and our power switch. So you'll go ahead and take the nut off of the power jack. And it's designed to go into the larger hole on the bottom. Like that. What I find works best is if you can get it positioned properly and then just sort of hold it with something to get it started. And then spin the piece from the other side, like that. It's much the same process with the power button. Take the nut and locking washer off of it. Slide it through the hole. Slide them on from the other side. Now before we try and mount up our volume control, what I'd like to do is put headers on these rather than try to solder wires directly to it. It'll make it easier to remove the panel in the back later on and it'll just look cleaner. So I've got these header pins and I'm going to go ahead and snap off one, two, three, four of them to start like that. And then I also need two sets of two. So two there, who we'll ended up with an extra one. And two there. And we'll go ahead and snap off that extra pin because we don't need it. So what you'll find is on this volume amplifier, there is output for your right speaker and left speaker, input for your power, and input for your left ground and right. I actually did need a three pin one. Look at that. That's okay. We can just use that pin as it is. So what we'll do is start off with our four pin header, go ahead and feed it through like that. And then our two pin here. And then our additional three pins here. Now the trick here is to try and prop it so that those pins stay in place, at least until we can get the first one soldered in. And the problem here is that this jack is actually too tall to allow that to happen easily. So we will make do with what we've got. So I'll go ahead and start with the corner pin here. Should just be able to push the solder into that like that. And then it's a little crooked, so I will heat it back up and push it into place. Just like that. Is it the perfect method? No, but it should work. Just repeat for each of the pins. And there we go. 
All of our connectors are covered with headers. Well, we're at it. We can go ahead and add our wire leads for the power to the amplifier as well as the power to the orange Pi. So we'll go ahead and take two of our female to female jumper cables and we'll go ahead and snip them. We're going to leave, want to leave a lot of length on one side and we don't need a ton on the other. Just like that. Go ahead and peel them apart like that. And then we're just going to strip one side. Go ahead and not fully peel apart these ones, but go ahead and leave a little slack and then we're going to strip them as well. Just like that. And finally, we will need one piece of wire to go from the power output to the power switch. Which will be this red wire right here, stripped on both sides. So here we have our mounted power jack and our power switch, and the goal is to connect this wire or this connector here to the switch because that's our positive, and then either of these is negative. So we will start off by tinning our red wire. Now tinning is just putting a bit of solder on it ahead of time to permanently bond all those wires together actually have a fair amount of extra solder on here so now you're gonna make sure you take care not to hit the 3d printed component because that's not going to work out so well for you this stuff gets very melty very quick so then for our tinned wire we'll trim it down to just what we need you don't need a ton of wire off of it Keep it clean. And then it should just be a matter of placing it against the component and heating up the solder and then letting it set. Now we will take our two jumper cables and we will twist the whites together because we need two positive outputs like that. And we will twist the negatives together like that. And again, we'll go ahead and tin those wires. You can get what's called a helping hand, which is a sort of sort of clamp hands that you can use to hold stuff like that. Uh, if you've got that, you'll be way better off than I am right now, but you can make do with what you got as well. Make sure to clean off any of the old excess solder off of your soldering iron as you go to make sure you get the best solder points possible. I don't believe we loaded the output. Uh, yes, we did. We're good. Okay. So now... We simply need to solder our wires into place. There's one. So now with this in place, we'll be able to get power to our Raspberry Pi or Orange Pi and to our audio amplifier over here. With our headers on the audio amplifier, we can go ahead and install the amplifier into the proper hole. It gets in there pretty tight on its own, but there is also a, a bolt that we'll put on at the end. Then from there, we can go ahead and connect our power to the header pins that we put on it earlier. Negative is on the right. Positive is on the left. And that is all there is to it. Once the Pi is connected, 
we have our power system ready to go. Now we can go ahead and start getting our speakers ready. Again, we're going to use headers. So uh, I've got these two headers, but you can use whichever ones you've got. So we'll go ahead and twist our wires together to get them nice and sort of tightly packed up. Do that on both sides. Then you can take one of your speakers and put one side through the positive, like so, and just fold it, and one side through the negative. Then we'll get our soldering iron out and our solder, and we'll make those connections permanent. There we go. Now, of course, we're going to have to have a way to get the audio to the amplifier. So what I like to do is take an old um, headphone cable and clip it off. And then essentially, you're going to split these apart like that. Then you're going to strip off the insulation like that. Repeat the same process for the other side. What we're left here with is two ground wires plus a left and a right. Essentially what you're going to do is link the two negatives together. Then we will strip off a bit of wire on each of the positives. Red being right and white being left. And then we have our three wire header here. Go ahead and strip off some insulation on each of those. Now is the time where if you're going to use heat shrink, you're going to want to break it out. You can obviously also use electrical tape. That's no problem. So for me, I'm going to use this red heat shrink. Take off a few pieces just like that. Now we look at our wire pairs and we've got red, black, and green. So we might as well put red to red for here. Then green is going to be our white because ground on our audio amplifier is in the middle. And conveniently enough, that ends up being the black wire. And the black is going to get bonded to everything that's left here. So this entire negative here. Make sure when you get the solder on the negative that you get it all in there like that. Fold our wires up, move the heat shrink down over top of the connection. Again, this is where you would break out the electrical tape if that's the route you wish to go. And I like to just use the edge of my soldering iron to shrink those down. You can also use a lighter or a torch or you know whatever gets it hot. Some people use a uh, heat gun, that works too. A little bit of electric tape to finish it off since the other ones are already isolated. Well, now that we have our speakers wired and our jack cable to get the audio from the Pi into the amplifier, we can go ahead and connect those cables up to the amplifier itself. So here we have the cable that we created with headphone on one side and the three pin header on the other. And it's going to go ahead and connect right up to here. So you'll see right is the top pin. So we'll go ahead and slide that on just like that. And then for each of the speakers, we can go ahead and connect it. And in this case, the right one's going to be the bottom and the left one's going to be the top. Now that our panel is finished being wired, we can go ahead and slide it into position. So we'll put our two speakers inside the cabinet and it should just drop right into that groove there. And then we're gonna need to get our, our speakers put into place. Now these aren't gonna be tight enough to friction fit into place, but what you'll do is you'll get them positioned and then Put a little bead of hot glue around them and that should hold them in place no problem. 
You may find it easier to do one at a time, flipping it on its side to whichever side you're attempting to glue. That way gravity will hold it in place and cut your working down. Now when you do glue your speakers, be careful not to get any glue into the actual cones because that's going to affect the way it sounds. You don't need to put a ton of glue in, in fact, it ends up being kind of a less is more type situation because the glue is hot enough to weaken your PLA if that's what you use to print it, so just use enough to get it secured. Now we're going to want to turn our attention back to the screen. We're going to want this mounted to the back of it, so I've gone ahead and created a bracket that may require some modification to be able to get yours to fit in depending on how thick the solder points are on the back of your board. But essentially what's going to happen is we're going to screw that control board to this. And then we can hot glue the plastic in place without worrying about damaging the board itself. Now we can look at mounting our orange pie directly into the cabinet. So we'll go ahead and pull the panel out of the back. It's going to make moving with it a little bit easier. And we're going to position it so the USB port and Ethernet port point forward. Now at this point you're going to make sure that you have your games and stuff copied to it already because it gets a little bit tricky to have to get to that Ethernet port after the fact. And of course, unless you modify the panel at the back to have some sort of USB access or Ethernet access, you're not going to have access to the stuff without getting into the box. And go ahead and slide our panel back into place now. And connect our audio into the headphone jack here, like that. Now comes the slightly tricky part. You just want to make sure you get this right because doing this wrong could cause you to fry your system and that would be no good. So we're going to connect the power to the GPIO. So the black one's going to go into the, from this position, bottom right. And then the white one, our power positive, is going to go into the top left. Which is a little tricky to get around the speaker. You'll notice that I mounted the speaker with the wires pointing up so that there's no chance of them interfering with the GPIO. It is fairly close clearances though, so you would have a hard time using all the pins on that GPIO to wire things. At this point, we're going to want to put our screen into its bezel. Here is the bezel that I came up with, and you'll see that there's an extra indentation at the bottom of it to make up for the ribbon cable. So by paying attention to that, you can make sure that you're putting the screen in correctly. Just push it down firmly. It does hold pretty well friction fit, but I do recommend adding a little bit of hot glue just sort of in each of the corners just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Don't go crazy because if you ever have to remove, reuse, or replace the screen, you're going to want to be able to do that. And again, friction fitting on it is pretty good, so a little will go a long way. Now it's time to think about putting these two pieces together. So we've got the top, and we've got the bottom, and they fit together just so. I've added this plastic tab here on both sides so that there's a little more surface area if you want to glue it in. Um, you are going to have to glue it in in some fashion, but you have a couple of options. There's always uh, the crazy glue option, which is going to be permanent and strong. But if you think you're going to want to do any work on it later on, reuse or reprint any of the parts, uh, it may be better to go with something that's not quite as permanent. I'm going to stick with the hot glue approach. Uh, the hot glue will hold the sides in, and what's going to happen is the screen also screws into the top and the bottom, uh, and the back plate also screws into the top and the bottom. So the glue will hold it in place, and then those panels should give it a lot more rigidity, so I don't think the crazy glue is going to be necessary. So again, we'll just slide the two pieces together. Then, working with the top down view, what you're going to want to do is make sure that just in case there's been any warping in the parts, you're going to make sure that the front curve lines up properly. It's more important that the front lines up than the back because the screen has to be held into position just right. So 
So once you're fairly confident that you've got your stuff in the right place, go ahead and take your glue gun or your crazy glue and get at it. So there you can see all of our components are mounted up inside. Before we get into mounting any of the other components like the screen and the control panel, I'd recommend figuring out where your USB cables are going to go uh, if you want to shorten any of them. We do have a fair amount of space that we can sort of just stash stuff in here. Uh, you are going to have to have a spot for your control board for your game controller as well, so keep that in mind. You don't want that near any exposed metal. Um, because there's so many different types of USB controllers you can get, I didn't integrate the uh, the uh, mounting bracket for it directly into the thing. I wanted to leave it open source enough that people can do with as they please. So first I'm going to connect the power for the screen to one of the USB ports. Just like that. Now this one does have a fair amount of access. Run it back through here, then up into the cavity on the top, like so. Here I'll grip up any of the excess cable. And push the other end back out. Next we have the USB for the gamepad. So we'll go ahead and connect it up to here. So the other power is actually going to be used to power this LED strip that is going to be responsible for our lights. So what we'll do is Stick our USB cable out through one of the holes. Go ahead and connect that to the last available USB. And then it is just a matter of first off peeling off this 3M tape so that we can double sided tape it down. Now I don't super trust the double sided tape they put on the back of this, it tends to fail for me. So we're also going to put a little bit of crazy or a little bit of hot glue rather to help it stay in place. Now we can bring our control panel back in and reconnect the USB cable to it. like so. And if you disconnected the buttons from the front, don't forget to reconnect them before you go forward and make sure you don't mix up the wires on them. And you can go ahead and put your control panel into position. Now when it comes to locations to mount this, I kind of just like gluing it to the side. Now we can go ahead and install our screen, which should just fit in. Remembering again, the ribbon here is down. We should just be able to slide it into position right above that control panel. Just like that. So because it is close quarters, you may find it easier to take your screen, plug the HDMI cable into it, like this, then run that cable through the cabinet, like so. Then Slide the screen back into position, like this. Just like so. With your HDMI successfully connected, reconnect your power if you had to disconnect it. And again, if you're using a long cable, you do have the 
extra room up top if you so desire. Now that's all, all that's left to do is give it power and make sure that it posts. Now one of the other changes that we're going to have is that the barrel connector that comes on the standard Orange Pi power supply isn't the same as the one that we're using to go into the back of it. I wasn't able to find a panel mount connector that would actually fit it, so we're just going to replace it with the one that I did find. So this is pretty simple. We're just going to cut off the actual barrel connector that's on the power supply now, just like that. Then we'll go ahead and strip the wire to expose it like that. And we have our positive and our negative. Strip away some of the wire like that. A little bit more for the negative. Like that. Then we're going to take our replacement barrel connector and it unscrews. And as you can see, the negative is the long one and the positive, well, sorry, the interior of the barrel is this one, which is going to be our positive, and the exterior of the barrel is the long one, which is going to be our negative. So I'm going to take advantage of this here. Since I don't have a set of helping hands handy, we're just going to tape it to the brick. And that should work just fine. Then we need our solder and our soldering iron. And we will start off by adding solder to the connectors on the barrel connector. Feeding the wires through the sheath for the barrel connector first, like that. Then, since they were a little long, might as well trim them down. So a little off the red. Again, just tinning the wires. Gonna act, going ahead and connecting negative to negative. to positive. Just like that. And we are ready to go. And that's it. If my instructions are clear enough and everything's gone right, you now have a fully functional arcade cabinet. If not, let me know where you run into problems in the comments below. Thanks again for your patience. I know this was a long one. Don't forget to toss me a like and to subscribe if you're new here. And uh, I'll be getting started on a new video project next week, so keep an eye open for that. And until then, stay creative.